Hello, welcome to our second workshop uh, on the uh, theme, Why Marriages Suffer and God's Precious Remedy for Them. Yesterday we looked at uh, uh, the whole matter of uh, uh, men or husbands and um, uh, fathers. And what is it that uh, causes them to fail to be the total man that God would have them be uh, in uh, their families? Of course, there was one riding principle, and that is the fear of God. For these husbands and fathers, it was the fear of God. Now we thank God. Today we look at this uh, topic again, and our spotlight uh, turns to uh, the women, uh, the wives, and the mothers. By way of introduction, as a married woman now, you may have had a difficult past when you were growing up. You may have had uh, parents who uh, were not uh, uh, giving you the kind of example that you wanted and that you knew was right uh, and that pained you and that you made a resolve that when you get married, you will change uh, the old um, scenario. You will uh, change uh, the old matter. You will want to be or you are hoping you'll be a, a wonderful wife, a wonderful mother uh, to your family. You are now married but not happy even though you have children and you have a husband who loves you. He actually Maybe still in his employment, even through um, this COVID-19 pandemic challenges, he held on to his job. Uh, the children are doing well. But there is no happiness. Deep down, you feel empty. You feel unsatisfied. There is these unfulfilled longings that you have, some kind of guilt even plagues you and you feel overwhelmed. You see, to tackle this kind of a situation, you decide to engage yourself in some form of employment away from home. Basically, you become a career woman. But also, you felt it is right, it is good, and you engaged yourself into a lot of activities in your church life. However, you are still lacking a sense of satisfaction. And you know what? Quickly, depression seemed to have settled in so that your marriage is not what you wanted it to be. Your marriage, you know, is not what God wants it to be. Then, of course, you recently heard that it was announced that one of the workshops at the conference will be one dealing with the issues of marriage. And hence you registered, and now you are here. I wonder, what is your expectation? What are you expecting from this workshop? And particularly today, as we are dealing with the whole matter of wives and, and mothers in their family setup. Now, I am not a professional counselor, no, but I am a biblical pastor. I want to walk with you through that road which will help you to move from that stagnant, that quagmire you are in and to move you to where God would have you be. Of course, we will not be able to be exhaustive. 
because being a workshop, part of the aim is to, if you like, excite you, to arouse a number of uh, concerns, some areas that you had not given thought, then you'd be able to follow up whether during this conference or even late after the conference, send your uh, concerns uh, to the conference uh, contact number. And we will see how we can be of help to you. But I want to affirm, I want to emphasize that God hasn't left you to group around um, not knowing where to do, what to hold, how to move away from where you are. God wants you to be clear in your own mind so that you get to know your role in building your family God's way. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, our God. Uh, you helped us yesterday to see the, the areas where husbands and fathers fail and how they can get back to the path. And we saw that it was through the fear of God ruling uh, their lives. And now we pray, guide us, help us as we want to um, trace uh, through this, Lord, uh, the place of wives and mothers and how then they will lead their families God's way. Hear our prayer and bless us now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, we've got then before us um, this uh, um, challenge. What really needs to happen? What needs to happen after I have given that introduction? And I want you to know this, that you need to realize, you realize that the fulfillment and security in uh, your marriage depends really on a deeper understanding of God's purpose for you as a person, as a wife, and as a mother. I want to encourage you to see yourself more from God's perspective and to seek to structure your life according to God's direction. Now, what we're going to see will be basic, basic truths uh, and that from them uh, then uh, they will hopefully lead you um, to um, seek God's grace to help you greatly. We will use the passage that we used last, uh, uh, in the last uh, workshop yesterday, uh, and that is um, Psalm 128. Psalm 128, and focus on God's word about the wife and mother. And uh, once again, I want to say how grateful I am uh, to Wayne Mack's book, uh, Your Marriage. God's way. Um, in one of his, uh, uh, you know, quotes, and, and I bring it here, he says, real personal fulfillment, and that is success, real personal fulfillment is a byproduct of a God-centered life in which a person becomes and does what is pleasing to God. And so, I want us to look at that passage then, Psalm 128, and specifically look with me at uh, verse 3, Psalm 128, verse 3, and pay attention to what it says. This is what we read. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children will be like olive shoots around your table. You see, we see God in this verse or in this passage, God uses a vine, that fruit tree of a vine, 
to describe a woman in her family. Now, God would have used, you know, other similes, surely, but he chooses to use a vine. Now, why is that? We may not appreciate uh, its significance today, you know, but in the Bible times, a vine symbolized a number of great things. It symbolized value. It symbolized prosperity. It symbolized luxuriousness. Something of great value. Therefore, highly desirable. Just still thinking about vine and its usage in the scriptures, in the book of Deuteronomy, you read in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verses 7 and 8, this is the thought we get there. God uses the vine to describe the good land where he will bring his people. The thought is equally captured in Isaiah. You read Isaiah chapter 36 verse 16. You see, God calls Israel his vine. You see, he calls Israel his vine to describe his relationship with them. And uh, that, of course, we get in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Uh, Jeremiah 20, uh, 2, verse 21, and also Hosea chapter 10, verse 1. But you know, it doesn't stop there. When we come to the New Testament, it even gets more surprising, but glorious. There, Jesus Christ himself, he calls himself the vine, and his father, the vine dresser. And that is in John chapter 15. Uh, John 15, verses 1 and Five. Of course, in that context of John's Gospel, chapter 15, that context, Jesus uses vine because it symbolizes life and ministry. And he wants his readers and therefore ourselves, he wants us to capture this that we completely depend upon him. In other words, he is our life. No. Do you see the high value our Lord places upon the wife and the mother? Maybe you had never looked at it this way, but there it is. So, dear women, the Lord values your ministry so much that he actually likens you to a vine. You see, in your current experience, you may be feeling unwanted. You may be caused to feel so useless, even feeling like God forsaken. But no, you need to know that God made you a vine and placed you in your family and as a mother for a strategic purpose. No, of course, of course, you know you're not perfect. You're aware of your own sins and many failures. But honestly, if you are a believer, if you are a believer, a believing uh, wife, a believing mother, then you see, you are united with Christ, therefore. And so the Holy Spirit indwells you. And therefore, you are of great value and significance. You see, God calls you a vine. And grasping this very vital point is important 
for your life. But I want you to notice something even more glorious. Because that one single verse, uh, Psalm 128 verse 3, we read this. Your wife will not, sorry, your wife will be like a fruitful vine. Within your house, your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Listen to this. Your wife, she is not only called a vine, and we've seen how that glorious that is. Actually, this passage uh, describes her in this way. A fruitful vine. Fruitful vine. Madam, God has put you in your family to be productive, to be a fruitful vine. Think of that passage, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And you what? You, you know what there? There, God gave the command to be fruitful and multiply. But that command was given. Not just to the man, but it was the man and the woman. And therefore, you are a principal partner, we may say, uh, in being fruitful. And don't forget God's own declaration that goes on in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Um, upon the woman where God says that a woman is a suitable, appropriate helper for the man. And so, you and your husband together make a God-honoring team to accomplish through his strength what he had purposed you to do. Uh, and, and please, before we leave this point, it's, it's glorious. You see, this word we, we meet in Genesis and in various other passages of Scripture, the word help, use of woman, is also actually used of God himself. In Psalm 121, I had indicated that verse, about that verse earlier, but Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2, this is what we read. Verses 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see, God is the very helper we need. Even so, a woman is the very help man needs to fulfill God's purpose in the home and in the world. Well, but really, we go on. What kind of fruit does God want you, dear wives and mothers? What kind of fruit does God want you to bear? And of course, the Bible is there for us, but we limit ourselves to just two passages. Galatians, and I'm thankful to God we've been uh, the whole week looking at the book of Galatians. And so Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, we read this wonderful um, description of the kind of fruit uh, that God wants us to bear. And we read this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's a glorious fruit that comes from the work of the Holy Spirit. And then, uh, that was... Galatians chapter 5, but John chapter 15, which we had looked at uh, earlier, but we looked at verses 1 and 5, but here in 
verse 8. John 15, verse 8. This one, again, is speaking primarily of the fruit of the Spirit. And we read this. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You see, as you bear fruit, others will see the power and glory of God demonstrated in your life. The fruit that the Holy Spirit brings about in our lives are not secret fruits or individually handled. No, they come upon us individually, but seen by all around us to the glory of God. You see, let us look at how this works out. Look with me at First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. I will read those verses. They're great. And uh, uh, we draw something from them. As we read them, just remember that as we bear fruit, others will see the power of God and his glory demonstrated in our lives. First Peter 3, from verse 1. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands for a reason, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Now, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. This is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. Dear wives and mothers, the most powerful way to be heard it's not by shouting at the top of your voices on the street, Hakietu, Hakietu. No, that is not the way your voice will be heard. But it is by your character, by your behavior, by your conduct. You will help your husband more powerfully by the way you live your Christian life. In other words, Christ in you. Well, so we, we are seeing great things about just this small verse and particularly about the woman as a vine, the woman as fruitful vine. But we're not done yet. So what does a fruitful vine woman look like? If you met one on the street, how would you know? Wow, that one I know is a fruitful vine woman. If you entered some home, how would you know this is a home of a fruitful vine woman, wife, and mother? Well, there are other passages that help us, other portions of the Bible. And that great passage, um, Proverbs chapter 31, Proverbs chapter 31, in fact, the whole chapter is wonderful, and particularly verses 10 to 31. These are key verses. Oh, if we just take, for example, verse 28, verse 28 of uh, Proverbs 31, we are told, her children, now remember, we are trying to look more closely the nature 
of this fruitful vine woman who is a wife and a mother. And it's said in verse 20, her children rise up early and call her blessed or blessed and her husband also and he praises her. In other words, she is protected by both her husband and children. Uh, you read verses uh, 16, 20, 24, and 31. Uh, we see her as a woman who impacts, gives impact positively um, to her home and her community, her society at large. So you see the character and conduct of this woman, you know, uh, stands as a great example of a wife and mother, um, you know, in God's kind of family. By the way, every Christian ought to demonstrate these these truths and even this, this fruit, every Christian, it should be true of them. But we are particularly looking at it from the perspective of a wife and a mother. Well, uh, let's even be more specific. What makes this woman tick? What, what makes this woman, we have seen she's uh, a fruit vine, wife and mother. Can we dig deep and find how come she is the way she is? And of course, just what we found about the husband is not different from her. She is a God-fearer. She fears the Lord. She is a God-centered person. God takes up her, her thinking, her energy, if you like. Everything in her is within the control of God. In other words, she has a big view of God. What's most admirable of her is not her beauty. No, not necessarily at all. No, but her vibrant and deep relationship with God. That's, if you like, that's what makes her tick. But you see, a God-fearing mother and wife will be one who honestly is slanted family way. Actually, that is the picture of Proverbs 31. The Proverbs 31 woman is so industrious. She even wants, yes, outside the home. However, she honestly is slanted. She is oriented homewards, family words. In other words, she is fruitful vine within her house. She takes great care of her family, even though she may be involved in other things outside the home. Her family is never neglected, no. But also, not only generally towards her family, actually she's slanted or she's oriented towards her husband and doing good to him and protecting him. We can't just get enough, you know, uh, from Proverbs. There's just plenty. Because there in Proverbs 31 again, verses 11 and 12, this is what we read, verses 11 and 12, the heart of her husband trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her, of her life. 
You see, and this is proved, by the way, by the fact that her husband, even her children, praise her, as we saw in verses 28 and also 29. I'll read that again. Verses 28 and 29, her children rise up early and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. And we are given a hint of what, uh, how he praises his wife. Many women have done excellent, excellently, but you surpass them all. Oh, that's a wonderful statement about uh, one's wife. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Are you able to say that about um, uh, oh, husbands, really, who must be listening to me? Husband, this is what you should be telling your wives. And we just hope that you don't just tell her so that she can make good chapatis, but that the whole lifestyle, how whole relationship towards you just make you be able to say uh, that. Well, let's uh, hurry. Let me give you uh, some uh, handles as we come to a close. I, I want to I want to make this a little more practical. Dear wives and mothers, honestly, you live at a time when pressure is greatest and you are urged to prove that you are able what do i mean there is that phrase you have heard it i'm sure many times uh, we can do what men can do and even better now that has been a phrase in the years of many uh, men and uh, i suppose they have reacted to it but but I'm talking to you, dear wives, dear mothers. You see, that kind of a statement, you can do what men can do and even better. You know what that has done? It has given rise to consuming desire in so many women, so many mothers and wives. Consuming desire to prove that point by pursuing the highest education. Yes, and by just wanting to be a career woman, come what may, at whatever cost. And that you want to be a leader. And you struggle and you, you, you use every means possible just to be a leader. You have joined or you're planning to join what they call the affirmative action groups and ETC, ETC. Now, these things are not bad in and of themselves. They're not evil necessarily. However, these things will not bring you satisfaction. No. Rather, in fact, they would so most likely they would lead you to anxiety, to frustration, landing you to depression. Honestly, these things that are being pursued by so many dear um, wives and, and mothers, they can be described as broken system with no satisfaction. You pour water in a broken pot and it just disappears and disappears. You see, the real problem in this is that you are looking to people and things for meaning rather than to God. You are allowing your own opinions and others, uh, other people's ideas to dominate and shape your thinking. Honestly, your attitude to God needs to change. Because when that changes, then your attitude towards your family will change. And change for the better, indeed. So, what does God say then? We've, we've seen, of course, a, a number of things, and God has spoken. But, uh, as in a summary, 
what does God say? What, what would God have you end up with in this workshop? Let God determine what really matters in your life. Let it be God. You see, if you are a Christian, that is, if you are a believing wife or mother, you are meant to be a fruitful vine within your house. We saw that in Psalm 128 verse 3. Your family ought to be your number one ministry. Yes. Please don't listen to anyone who degrades their family. Instead, listen to God who says that family is of great value. Listen to God. Of course, friends, when, when children have grown and are out of the home, certainly, like the, like the Proverbs 31 uh, woman, oh, you may be involved in matters outside the home, but... Do all to the glory of God and for the good of the family. You know, let me end by saying this honestly. Now, you may never win a beauty contest at the national level, at the county level, even at the village level. But if you fear the Lord, then you are beautiful in the most important point, character and conduct. This will make you a powerful influence in the home and among God's people, of course. You will be a beautiful vine. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, we we give you praise. We thank you. The very first marriage, you're the one. You brought two together. You cancelled them. And you performed that first wedding. And you haven't left them. Yes, of course, they've wriggled out. Sin came in. Satan came in and caused loads of problems. But wisdom is to get back to you so that your will in marriage is followed. And yesterday we saw what men, husbands, fathers need to do, to do all that in the fear of the Lord. And today we are seeing our dear wives and mothers have a great, unique, special place in families. They are a fruitful vine Help every dear wife and mother to once again look back and see that you honestly had it all sorted out. And all the wrong ideas that have come in have not helped. And that every dear lady, even our younger ones, growing up and longing to get married, may they see that you plan for them from eternity indeed to be fruitful vines in their families. Hear our prayer. Bless us as we now commend ourselves to you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.